Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, in this video today, we are going to do a broad overview of the LibreOffice package suite, which is going to be a free and open source alternative to Microsoft Office. Now, if you're using a cloud services like Office 365 or Google Docs in the cloud, that is excellent for writing your manuscript, but you are going to want to come down to your computer level if you are going to be doing your typesetting yourself. You're not going to be able to do those as efficiently online, if at all, depending on the versions of the software you're using. So in this video, we're going to look at the LibreOffice suite in the event you do not have another Office suite, or if you want to do something that's more open source and free software. Okay, so before we actually get into this, and I'm just going to do a brief overview verbally here, and then we'll go ahead and launch into the software itself and have a look at what the software can do. Now, the biggest reasons I love LibreOffice is because it gives me a, an ability, no matter if I'm on Windows or Mac or on Linux, I can install the software and I can use every feature of it without actually having to pay for it. Of course, if you're making regular use of it, you might want to support the, the company with a donation to the LibreOffice Foundation. But that being said, it is cross-platform. That means that you can download an installation for any of the operating systems. Now, on Windows and on Linux, you will get not only the full package, but you'll also have the individual launch icon. So the individual launch icon for the writer, for the spreadsheets, for the presentations, and things like this. On the Mac, they don't have the individual launchers, just the way a Mac packages software. So you will get just one launcher, which is launch the, launches the basic whole application. And from within there, you can launch each of the individual tools that you need. But once you get everything launched, everything else in there is exactly as it works. The other reason I really like doing this is if you're an author, you might want to print out some business cards. Well, LibreOffice actually has fast templates for printing out business cards and mailing labels so that you don't have to go onto Avery's website, download a template as an office document, and then type and paste and type and paste. Literally, you can go into here, click the create a label button, select the label from the list, do the label one time, push the synchronize button, and it pushes the label out, and then you can print it out. Very awesome tools. And they have the same function for building business cards as well. Spend the time, build one of them right, hit the button, and it copies that to all of the other cards so that you can now print out your business cards and things that you need in that respect. Now, uh, as far as the other functionality, this can replace the full Office suite of Microsoft Office, including the databasing, which is great for me because I use my databasing to keep track of all of my sales, uh, the books that are coming in, the books that are going out, the books I have in inventory. You can actually do that inside of the databasing functions without actually having to pay for the full, full-fledged professional. You can get the office without the databasing fairly cheap, you know, 100 bucks a year or whatever. If you want the full database pen package, it's going to cost quite a bit more. That is all also included inside of LibreOffice. So that is just a basic overview. We're going to go in and uh, have a look at the software and uh, we'll just go ahead and have a look at there. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, so here we are on the LibreOffice website, LibreOffice.org, and I have been using this pretty much full time for about two or three years now. So, and I've just found that this is every bit as as compatible as Microsoft Office. If you're one of the one percent who needs some very weird, obscure feature. Microsoft Office is probably still going to be good, but if you're upset with the fact that they keep on pushing subscription services and you know if you had the, the case where they deleted your Microsoft Office off your computer uh, in an update, that's happened to a couple people that I know, and you're just like, you know what, I just need something to write some Office documents, or hey, we're authors, right? I need something to write my book. This is a good logical choice. Head on over here to the download menu. You'll see Download LibreOffice. Uh, there's a variety of different things. Uh, of course, the Flatpak Snap App Image, those are all related to uh, Linux options. And uh, you can actually go ahead and grab your um, just the download over here to select your operating system. Now, I'm doing this video here on Linux, so that's why it auto detects that I'm on Linux. And uh, you can also go with the Mac or with the 32 or 64 bit PC. So you can grab this. Now, I'm actually going to be showing you this on uh, 6.2. 
two, just because I hold back this operating system uh, a version back. Uh, 6.3 is the latest. Everything I'm going to show you here today is is going to be uh, something that you'll see in 6.3. So if you're downloading it new, just grab the 6.3. And uh, you can go ahead and download it and go ahead and install it. Now, your major difference is on Linux and on Windows. When you actually go into your office, uh, you know, wherever your, your shortcuts are at, Windows will give you the ability to load the individual programs. So the writer is obviously the one that, as authors, we'll be spending most of our time in. Um, the math is will allow you to do equations. Impress is basically a PowerPoint presentations. Uh, draw gives you the ability to do PDF forms and some other functions with basically like a toolkit, uh, spreadsheet, and a full base suite. Windows and Linux both give you the option to open these up individually. Mac only gives you this option, which you can load all of the other files in between. It's just the way the Macintosh packages uh, packages, files, uh, and applications. So you can come over here and you can pull up if you need a new writer document. You can just go ahead and do this and it's going to open up your uh, your office suite for writing. Now, when you're on this main screen here, why might you want to load this one up? Well, one of the major advantages to loading this one up is if you're working with anything like uh, like templating or things like this, of course, here's presentation templates. Uh, there's some um, uh, form letter type templates. Here's a business card with logo templates, resumes, a lot of varieties over here. But the other great feature, as I mentioned in the introduction, is the ability to create labels and business cards. You can head over here and under your wizards, uh, is that under wizards? I forget where it's at. It's under new. Uh, under new, you can see labels and business cards. This is just an excellent place to do all of your different uh, different tools over here. So let's just go ahead and select labels. And then what we're going to do here is you just kind of pick what type of label it is. If you're doing this from a database, you go ahead and grab this. Or you can just do it as a blank file as well. Grab your, um, your brand down here. Now, not every single brand is in here, but you'll be able to, to at least get pretty close to what you are. You can see this one here is a 3x6, uh, 250 inches by 183 inches. You can scroll down to find whatever happens to be related to your, your address label. You can, of course, select one of them, but then do some slight adjustments. So if you do need to make some adjustments to the sizes, um, I was going to grab just a random one, but that was a weird random one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and have a look at what this one looks like. All right, that's good enough. So you can see, you can see your padding. So you can make the slate adjustments to these if you want to. And then um, if you hit the synchronize content button, it'll create a new document and you can just go ahead and create your label or business card if you chose that. Um, get your formatting exactly the way that you want it. and push the synchronize button and it'll go ahead and create that. So now you can go ahead and print out your labels. So that's an excellent thing that you can do inside of this with using your basic uh, overlays. So as far as our writer application, now if you're an older guy like me and you remember the old toolbars in Microsoft Office and you prefer these like I do, you have that option. That's kind of the default. If you are definitely used to or you really love the new ideas, uh, 6.2 or later, you can come over here grab user interface under view, go into tabs, and now we have the very similar tab layout that you might be more used to. If you switch over to this one here, our menu here over on the uh, the right, which uh, you can't see because of the way that this thing, uh, uh, you know what, it has to do with where this pulled up. There it is. Now you can see it. All right. You can switch this guy back over to your standard toolbars. All right. So uh, you can actually pull this guy open or closed adjusting the size. So over here is all your default styles. Now, when we actually get into teaching you how to do formatting of a book for typesetting, you will be living in this pane. You'll become very, very familiar with all of this over here. Uh, you also have your navigation is going to work, tell you where your tables are, where your images are, where all your headings are at. Basically make sure that the format of your, your document is good. Here's your basic, uh, just some basic clip arty type stuff. We can drop on into documents. Uh, just by, I believe we just can just grab, drag them over. Yep. There you go. You can do that kind of stuff. 
right clicking your images, changing where the anchors are, things like that. So you have a full office suite available. Now as far as your theming and colors and icons, there are a variety of different places um, where you can make some bit general adjustments. Most of your options are going to be under tools and options. This is where you have basic defaults. So any user data that you input over here will get automatically added. So you might come in here, type in your publishing company name, your street address, um, first name, last name, whatever you want to do in here. And then uh, that'll basically add this to any of the documents that you create in here. Uh, there's under just some basic other general settings where you, you're you printing to a, uh, to a printer. You can print to a file. That's another feature. I don't remember if Microsoft Office does this yet or not by default, uh, but LibreOffice has always allowed you to just export right to a PDF. So <laughs> once you have your book formatting done, click that button, export right to a PDF, ship it right on out to your, uh, to your distribution partner, and they'll be able to create your books for you. So uh, it's just so many great options. Like I said, I don't use Office much, so I not, can't tell you if all that's exactly there. Uh, changing your colors, uh, we, that one thing we collect takes a little bit of time to load up. And then uh, you also have individual settings for different applications. So since we've pulled this down inside of Libre Writer, we have tools just for inside of here. So if you want to set uh, specific fonts, uh, so here's all your basic default fonts. Of course, I'm on Linux, so it gives me um, Libre type fonts. If you had your uh, now, if you are sharing documents back and forth with people on Windows computers or Mac computers, you want to install the fonts that you're going to see on those computers. Um, just make sure that you're setting a default font that uh, that your friend is going to have. Otherwise, uh, it may not work quite as right, but that's actually quite okay. Here's again print settings. Uh, table settings, what's the default sizes for tables, basically all these types of things. What does your um, uh, your changes look like for change tracking, all that type of stuff. So you can come in, into here, um, auto captioning, you can determine how things are captioned out. Now as far as different uh, checkers and whatever else, let me get rid of these boxes here. Um, Let's do, I spelled it right. Spelled it right. I didn't want it spelled wrong. The spieling cheeker. See how the spieling cheeker works. You can kind of see that we have a spelling options over here. Um, everything there should work. The only places I've seen this not work is on some obscure Linux versions. They don't have the, the plugin set for this. Windows, Mac, it'll have that built in by default. If it's not there for some reason, you can actually look for the extensions. There's a whole lot of extensions out there. You can look on it for extensions to install. It does not have grammar built in by default, but if you have a look at the FOSS software on the channel, uh, Language Tool is an excellent uh, has an excellent plugin that you can put in. That's what I'm using for all my grammar checking right now uh, on the uh, on the initial pass. So it does have that with a with a plugin from languagetool.org. Spelling checker should be already set for you. Everything else is pretty much set to go. So you can kind of see this is not just some some cheesy knockoff. This is a a full functioning suite. And uh, this is why I love using LibreOffice, and I do produce all my books inside of LibreOffice. Uh, I write them, I do all the checking, I do the uh, the typesetting, and then I export the file directly just by going over here into the file, hit my export as PDF. And uh, you do want to make sure when you're exporting as a PDF, and we will mention this when we get into the... Uh, when we get into the uh, the more typesetting type videos under document properties, you want to make sure that your fonts are embedded into the document. Just go ahead and create a template with your fonts embedded in the document so you don't forget because if those are not there, your printer may not be able to print those out correctly. So that's all functions that is right inside of LibreOffice. So there's a brief overview of LibreOffice. We will be spending a ton of time in this application on this channel as uh, this is really what I use as my, my main backbone, my go-to application for writing and producing books. So thanks for coming along on this edition of Writing Done Right, where we will teach you how to get your writing done right.